After Megan entered, he was unable to grin normally. In the Invictus, Harry appears to be happier with Beth, his attractive brunette helper, than with Megs, who is irate. Hello everyone, and thank you for visiting our Kate Middleton and the Queen YouTube channel again. It seems appropriate to bid a Harry smile farewell. I wanted to thank you everyone for talking with me about something I put in my community tab this morning. Needless to say, I concur with everyone. Every time Megan is there, Harry instantly displays signs of distress, and I do worry whether anybody is now stuck. I suppose it's quite evident that it's Harry. Harry was simply enjoying himself, as someone else stated. He was attempting to have some fun when that killjoy whom he had previously married appeared and began directing everyone. It didn't take Harry long to regain his previous frown. Harry appears to be possessed by the serpent once more. He has been so firmly encircled by her. She is suffocating him to death. Harry's miserable because he realizes that he jumped in way too quickly when he met Megan he didn't give their dating period long enough he couldn't see past her pretty face even though it's not that pretty he was advised to take his time and slow things down he heard that from King Charles from his brother Prince William from the late Queen and even the Earl Charles Spencer but Harry didn't listen to anybody's advice he thought that he knew better he didn't take the time to acknowledge that. She had some pretty bad traits and that she was using him and now I think he knows that but he can't admit it because this is all down to his own mistakes that he like an idiot made he couldn't deal with the shame and the humiliation of admitting that maybe he was wrong about Meghan Markle and of course Harry's not happy I mean his entire life has changed ever since he married her he's so far away from his family. In every sense he's away from his former homeland the only homeland he ever knew away from his former friends and he's so far removed from the way of life that he was used to before he left his home now maybe he can't admit it to himself just yet but one day he is going to let everybody know how all this affected him Harry, after all, enjoys sharing his problems, as evidenced by his book, the Netflix documentary, and that incident with Oprah. Unfortunately, Harry lacks the moral courage to do that, instead, he prefers to point the finger at others and refuses to take responsibility for his own actions. This is why he is so cruel to his father and brother, by doing so, he can avoid taking a good, long, honest look at himself. Hasty repentance at leisure with Mary Meghan doesn't appear to be very proud now that Harry admitted in court that the media prevented him from staying at Chelsea. Similar to how Meghan wears the Cartier Love bracelet that was a wedding gift from her previous wedding and was given by a fan of Trevor, he practically reminded the public that Meghan Markle was not his first choice. He also still wears the necklace that Chelsea gave him. Greg asked, is that woman really pushing Harry out of the way? Harry must realize that a lot of these valiant soldiers swore loyalty to the late queen and would have devoted their life to protect her. Veterans are also aware of the deplorable curtsy mocking hour of the late queen and the remarks made in the Oprah interview three weeks prior to Prince Philip's passing. It's hard to imagine that a year has passed since our late queen ascended to paradise. I'll never forget that amazing evening and the final appearance of our lovely late queen on the balcony of the palace. Greg M. clarified that it was a conscious decision. Despite being so unwell she could not stand, Her Majesty persisted because she didn't want to let the millions of admirers down who adored her. Additionally, I'll never forget the Harper's abhorrent treatment of our late queen while she battled bone cancer. The late queen was extremely smart and could always make me feel better with her words of wisdom no matter the problem, and I will love her and miss her smile till the day I die. Queen Elizabeth II could light up any city with her smile, she was just magnificent. God speed to your soul mate. Thank you, your majesty, and Prince Philip I entirely concur with him. Harry is really disturbed and we're sick and tired of him and his backstabbing lying cheating ways. Everyone is sick and tired of Harry's constant whining about everything under the sun, and now he's complaining that he had no support network when he returned from Afghanistan. What is he talking about with all that money and with everyone around him, I don't understand how he can say he felt like he didn't have anyone. Is he ever going to stop sharing his opinions? Therapy is a two-way process, a patient cannot be helped if they are unwilling to help themselves. Harry continues expecting that everyone would side with him, but it takes work. Harry is conflicted in the same manner as those who are unable to accept or deal with reality are. Harry is completely unaware of the pathological acting out he engages in to cause his family serious emotional traumas. 
Harry tells unreserved falsehoods about the protagonist of his fictitious family without guilt or shame since he is lying to himself about himself. Harry is a persona not grata who has no idea why, or more precisely, has no desire to discover why. He will probably grow even more dissatisfied once he realizes that his occasional consumption of illegal psychoactive drugs isn't giving him the same high. What happens to them is anyone's guess. Since Harry has no place in British public life, history will judge him harshly for his current behavior. Call him a betrayer of the principles of the monarchy. He cruelly damaged his grandmother's longing to meet him in her final weeks, tarnished the royal family's image as a symbol of British values, and denigrated the UK and its citizens. He is not a prince of the realm, according to a royal watcher named Karen, who also stated, What a very sad figure you are Harry. You have exposed yourself as a drug user, a liar, a fantasist, a fully grown mind with mental health issues, and a person who has thrown your entire family, including your late grandparents, father, stepmother, brother, and sister-in-law, against the wall with impunity. You even dragged your young niece deal with issues related to your adult mind and mental health as you see fit. In your novels, write whatever you choose. I won't spend money on them. Karen claims that while she can put up with your attitude towards the UK and even the press, she cannot forgive you for your treatment of the people of this nation and your attacks on your family. You don't set a good example for others to follow, much less impressionable kids, as someone with a position in life. You must now be a source of shame for any charity groups you are connected to. It's time for you to leave public life behind. It's time for you to maintain whatever dignity you still have. You need to stop preaching and go to a location where you can recover because nothing you are doing right now is helping you. One should not manage life by snapping at others. The world owes you nothing, not a single cent, penny, euro, or any unit of currency. Only then can you and the rest of your family move on, assuming you ever heal or allow yourself to do so and you have really witnessed people forgiving you. I mostly agree with Karen on this matter, and you know what, if Harry cannot atone if he never does admit that he's been so incredibly wrong, then perhaps the royal family should just exile him and never speak to him again, even if he ends up broke and homeless.